So let's take a look at what is possibly the top performing list, top two, uh, Max Cantor. So he went undefeated, as we can see here, um, as it is hit his event. Boom, boom. You guys want to take a quick look? We have, uh, where is this? Uh, in Germany. Sorry, I was like looking around. So this event was in Germany. As you can see, they're using WTC. Um, this terrain, guys, I think uh, it, it is different than the GW terrain as a whole. GW terrain, sometimes a little bit more open because you can see a, you can see people's objectives. And the WTC terrain is not as easy. So let's take a look at Max Cantor's list. So right off the bat, Beast Boss. And keep in mind with Tyler Russo's list, he had Gas and Mazrog, right? The Hammer and the Anvil. Specifically, they're trying to deal with some of the problematic problems Orc have with AP, uh, very tough, durable units, multi-damage, with damage reduction, uh, still retaining the Anvil of Mazrog. So, and you can see right here again, we have another list, but this one says Sean Naden style coming from <laughs> Cantor, so he's being funny. But he has uh, Beast Boss, Gas Ghoul, just like Sean Naden did. Mad Doc Rotsnick. Sean Naden, in fact, did not have Mad Doc Rotsnick. He had a knob with Wall Banner. He has a knob on Smash Squid with Ed Wapa Skill Chopper, just the way I like to see Ed Wapa. Another knob on Smash Squid, followed by War Boss with Follow Me Lads. Um, just to say now that War Boss is not going in the knobs unit. So we have a Beast Boss unit, Battle Line. That's with the Beast Boss, of course. And then one 20 man unit of boys. In my opinion, that's where the War Boss is going. And that's where Mad Doc Grotznik is going. If you don't know what Mad Doc Grotznik is or what he does, he's pretty much like a pain boy. But instead of regening unit and having a syringe in his data sheet, he has the ability to give fallback and charge to the boys unit. But he still has the five of Fiona pain to the unit. So he doesn't regen guys, but he brings guys um, to give the ability to fall back and charge, which is pretty awesome. That's usually enhancement. And he's cheaper than a pain boy by about five points. So then we have one truck and a battle wagon the battle wagon is art is nail it has art case and then uh which is a death roller all it's also no governs on it we, we know what it is uh two units of gretchen uh two mega knobs with straight up for gas two big bricks of squig hog boys followed by two storm boys unit and another two war bikers units and he calls this list what did he call it non Nathan style so that's what he calls it sean Nathan style it actually has some good scoring potential with all those kind of cheaper small units all over the table yet he has his brick of boys for oc war boss i mean it's war boss in the brick of boys for the ability to punch two big bricks of knobs and then mad uh uh gas ghoul mag urthrak this guy's really just trying to occupy the whole center of the table that's just really how it's looking like um he's like it's really hey if this is the objective the enemy wants to keep let's say there's an enemy objective i'm gonna go hold this this is gonna be my home objective right outside of the deployment zone that's really what a 20-man unit of boys is there for right most of the time people want to take something and commit run over to your objective and go oh i'm gonna harass you try to take your home objective um keep my big death blob here so you can't kill it whatever well that's the thing is a 20-man unit of boys for the most part even if they're not killing you they have their five up in vault and a five of funeral pain they have enough power calls in that unit between the dock between the war boss and the knob in the unit that they can at least cripple most elite infantry or whatever units are doing a little bit and then retain that punch hold the objective threaten it let the enemy know hey if you sit there i'm gonna get here and possibly tag two objectives i can i maybe go to your home objective because i have the ability to fall back and charge so that unit of boys that you didn't kill maybe 15 died the other 15 maybe even 20 died the 10 are gonna go back and they're gonna charge your home objective whatever you had there so you can't really sleep on a 20-man unit of boys this is the second time we've seen this happen where before it was with the knob and wall banner but a 20-man unit of boys in this in in this battle wagon is what i'm assuming um he just had to go and he had to go down the field and this guy went undefeated so people are always sleeping on blobs of boys they're always complaining about uh gas compared to maz in reality we know that you can't do exactly what other people do but you can mix what you want to do with what's meta we know squig hog boys are excellent here we go we have enough squig hog boys on the list to deal with monsters to deal with vehicles but we also have gas and the ability to bust armor and get crumping so let's actually take a look at some of his matchups and see what happened here right so in his first matchup, let's take a little quick look, is Chaos Marines. So one of the meta bullies. Let's see how meta this bully is. So we have Abaddon the Despoiler. Despoiler. Chaos Lord. Chaos Lord. Cultist. Chaos Rhino. Chaos Terminator Squad. Um, That looks like a big unit. One big unit of Terminator. So that's a big commitment right there. Between Abaddon and that big unit of Terminators, guys, that's about 700 points, I believe. So we have um uh, chosen so chosen are excellent they're undivided they can just choose to tell their gods hey let me do um devastating wounds and all the other abilities we already have built in like lethal and sustained 
um, that we can have, you know, they can use it. They have a very complicated ability to play their army guys, so they can choose to utilize lethals and they can choose to ask their god to give them devastating wounds, and then they can hurt themselves. So they're actually called dark packs. I call them, <laughs> I said they're gods. So we have the forge fiends, two forge fiends with ectoplasma, and then we have the obliterators, the obliterators with their ability to have indirect fire. If they can actually regen with the strap, they can bring a dude back from the dead. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then they have warp talent. So warp talent is kind of like their version of a skirmish unit for 100 points, but you always hear me all the time say one or squig hog boys a three-man unit is an excellent skirmishing unit because let's say they go up into a unit of warp talents the squig hog boys eight out of ten times or nine out of ten times are crumping those those warp talents um so that's one thing that we like to see here and with that being said it with that big unit of terminators depending on the mission they're playing and stuff that's such an investment that um i've done this matchup you could just move the squig hog boys away from let's say the obliterators and the terminator squad and just kill everything else in the army so i'm assuming that's what he did um and he what he got a 20 so yeah that's what i'm expecting went pretty well um going into stefan max it was black templar so a pretty decent army uh lieutenant in phobos armor lieutenant with kami weapon and master of the machine that's the aura oh so this is the iron yeah this is the iron storm spear so this is the one of the things we were worried about as orc players guys let's see what happened what he did so he has a uh, master of the war machine tech marine targeting aura web and adept of the messiah so he has a four field no pain on one of these he has the ability to um give lethals and i believe this one the master of the machine is one where you ignore one of the damage so right off the bat yes and then the emperor champion for his fight i like he has okay that looks kind of cool let's see before i start going in we have a gladiator reaper so he had right there you can see he has some volume for that mob boy unit right so let's see if he has stuff to pop it so he can get to them get to them from the battle wagon it's the black templar and the repulsor executioner not necessarily that great it can it can very much pop the battle wagon, but it's not reliably going to um we have an inceptor unit infiltrator unit land raider redeemer oh this one with the flamers uh sword brother unit a redemptor a redemptor so only two redemptors in that unit one reaver squad two scout squad so squads uh, scout squads are excellent units as a whole that's something that we have to pay attention to with our orcs um you know make sure they don't get in the way from our squig hog boys and such like that but all in all it's not the most meta army that we've seen right now right it's not because and the only reason why i say that's not the most meta is because we do see the reavers here we do see you know a little bit more infiltrators and infantry that we would normally see into these units um i would like to see more even another redemptor to be honest on this list but all in all we worry about this him having gas like i keep saying and he has the ability guys on his own to run up and threaten something like a land raider redeemer the squig hog boys unit on its own and all their squig bombs with ed Wapa's kill chopper can threaten a land raider redeemer gas on his own punches out a dreadnought pretty dang reliably while a 20-man unit of boys just out ocs any of these units and they just don't dig them out fast enough um not to mention everything else he had his list you still have the war bikers on his list the storm boys on his list they're running around doing action storm boys can go around tag scout if they can if they can but they can go around and tag reaver squads they're not really worried about that if you run them into the middle you just give them something to charge with those bikers so um it is tough but it's not the strongest version we've seen of the iron storm yet it's still a valiant list and it was still a great win he got 15 points on that let me take a look at what chat's saying no one can stop the great hole oh, oh, straw have at luffy giving them memberships pick up the membership boys get into that raffle don't forget to subscribe get that free raffle we're going in it's gonna be great it's gonna be a good time um oh what's going on here my i just noticed that my video oh there it goes it went down for a second i was still checking it out okay we're back sorry sorry guys about that that was unusual um we got daka 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 sorry so we're looking to the next list i seen that i had seen that the video stream went down for a second guys for those that are listening uh so we're back on so let me see what we're looking at we were looking at this third matchup right this third matchup is necron so orcs don't really have a bad time into necrons to be honest so catacomb command barge that's like one of their it's like a little ship if you haven't seen it before it's actually kind of cool i do it on it and stuff uh chronomancer hex mark destroyer that guy's really annoying for his overwatch luminars with Zerus, locust lord with veil of darkness that's for them to pick their guys up and pretty much redeploy them somewhere like on the field um work in the diviner royal warden i don't really think the royal warden's necessarily worth it even with the hyper veiler blah 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 hyper material ablator um and then transcendent katan katans are excellent very annoying two big units of necron warriors a ghost arc a canoptic reanimator canoptic swarm and two crypto thralls so he's going straight up and then locust heavy destroyer so he's going straight up here my big 20-man units uh try to stop me 
The thing is, there's those un armies that can and will crump units of boys or uh, Necrons and keep touching them and keep holding them down and beat them up. And one of those armies that works, right? You take two big twenty, two sorry, two big units of Squig Hog boys and put them into a twenty man unit of boy or uh, sorry warriors. They can actually take them out. Um, the Catan is very durable, but to orcs necessarily, we we actually have the tools to take them out. When you look at uh, Naden style list, he had the Beast Boss for the mortal wounds. He had Edwapas for the mortal wounds. Um, on top of the fact you can throw grenades at it, stuff like that. When uh, personally, in my opinion, I you know in my experience, sorry, so orcs have a good chance of one shot in the Catan. To be honest, as long as you have those kind of those exact tools on your list. So all in all, um, what he would consider durable and would really lean into wouldn't work into orc um, and not that style of list, considering that he brought the volume of boys and squig hog boys to just get in their face crump the neck rounds hold them back in their deployment zone not let them score that high um there was some points scored as you can see he did get 15 points but we have no idea what the mission was it could have been purged foe or something so we have his fourth matchup thousand sons what used to be considered an art list for orcs right um armin 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 on disc of zeech exalted sorcerer of uh on disc of zeech infernal master infernal master infernal master magnus the red and thousand sun sorcerer okay with see these are one two three four five six so six straight up six five man units of chaos marines we have three four yeah all six of them have war flamers as well so he's going for pretty homogenous here the only difference is which characters are putting in there and which um enhancements they have on their list two chaos two rhinos and one changeling so he's really character heavy on this list um he doesn't have the forge fiends he doesn't have anything like that he's really just really doubling down and hoping magnus does a lot of the carrying here not really in the scene the synergy here not hating on this player or anything like that but uh even with that it's just too cat too too character heavy um 17 points very good one orcs don't have a problem with it. if you don't bring the forge fiends if you don't bring enough of those kind of tools and such the orcs are just gonna walk all over t-sons and that's what they did i mean even with magnus the dev wounds the gas the oc from the boys taking the objectives small constantly doing secondaries presence on the board orcs aren't having a problem with that um so going on to his fifth game we have space wolves with strike four stormlands so this is what the, you would think space Wolves would want to play right they're super excited to play that um space wolves are like yay i finally get to advance and charge and get all these cool abilities and they really do <clears throat> but they don't really hit that hard that's the problem so they have a lieutenant with chaos weapons sorry can, would, <laughs> chaos weapons <laughs> lieutenant with combi weapons ulric the slayer wolfguard battle leader on thunder wolf with hunter instincts wolfguard battle leader on thunder wolf and wolfguard battle leader on thunder wolf and then a wolf lord on thunder wolf so boom he's just going all thunder wolf uh blood claws rhino you can imagine what this is going to look like right guys come on with me one big unit of eradicators i really like to see that from him he already knows his weakness his weakness will be other vehicles and monsters he is going to need those eradicators and region wolves excellent for their point cost excellent excellent one gladiator lancer um i do think if you're going to bring them bring two but oh well inceptor unit he brought it as a damage output unit because he decided to put it on plasmas and make it a big unit one big six man unit infiltrators scouts only one scout a little disappointed to see that and then one two three big units a thunderwolf cavalry um right here you can see off the bat they're lacking strength even between the one lancer the one inceptor um and the eradicators i mean maz with artist nails just tanks everything from those guys uh he does have the one bl blood call unit for the rhino that's cool uh, i think everybody every army kind of brings their version of that nowadays but even between all these thunder hammers as a whole they're really just hoping that these thunder wolf calves with their characters will do the punching and do most of the heavy lifting while at the same time being there to be hit as they're just taking up the lanes as big cavalry unit personally whenever we david and i talk about this as david was a pretty much is primarily a thunder a space wolf player um he doesn't see this as being a great matchup for him as a whole going into orcs because our odd toughness with our ability to fight in death where our ability to put the volume through their with through their wounds um and their and their odd toughness means that we don't really find this to be a matchup and what we can take from their shooting is too much for them to kind of overcome with their fighting so uh space wolves kind of i think just end up getting kind of overran there with just straight orc kind of crumping but it's a good fight it's good scrap regardless you meet him in the middle and such um last but not least i believe right before i ju jump ahead make sure i don't make sure i don't max there's two maxes yeah okay make sure i didn't miss one of the matchups going into this last list it is the tau empire so tau on paper 
not always super mild problematic for the orcs because we have the ability to uh touch them in their deployment zone really put on that pressure since turn two right away even if they put stuff in front of us but let's see what happens uh they have unval cadre fireblade cadre fireblade cadre fire i don't know where that sorry i'm sorry with the accent command <laughs> commander and coltar battle suit with an exemplar of Kayun. um I'm, i guess i'm not over that breach your team a breach your team breach your team all right so he's gonna have two three okay two devil fish transports crisis battle suits with cyclic ion blasters um they got a couple shield they got a shield drone and jet shield generator so they got their wounds they got the extra wounds and everything uh hammerhead gunship hammerhead gunship so they got their two rail guns very 20 damage ability to get rerolls built in d6 plus six damage um if they get it off it's going off right one of the few units that oops gamma and it's devastating right so they're getting a six oops they could put all that damage into you crew 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 hounds crew hounds crew raider pathfinders uh, piranha 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 and tetra so just a bunch of garbage and chaff i personally like those kind of armies i just don't think they were going to be happy going into orcs with this um they don't have the volume of fire to really keep them off us they do have enough stuff to put in front of themselves so at least they have the best chances they can but all in all all of these units are getting killed uh between think about it two big bricks of squig hog boys you're gonna have to run through and maz on top of the fact that you still have all those boys that shoot through yes they actually tout are one of the few units that can shoot through that unit but you really are hoping that you don't whiff on this railgun ship. And then even when you do whiff, you still can just tell the boys, here we go, run off the table, follow the, just get a nasty charge off and start touching everything, touching all the midboard objectives, draw the fire there. That volume doesn't end up going into all the squid hog boys. The second unit goes and touches everything. Gaz comes out of nowhere, Kool-Aid man through the walls, destroys everything, gets crump and orcs take over the table. Victory for the orcs. I really love to see that. Did I make that all over my head? Yes, I did. You can see I got excited. All right. Great job, Matt.